welcome back. This is chapter 9, part 2. In this part, we will learn about isocost curves. What are isocost curves? They show various combinations of inputs that may be purchased for a given level of expenditure, C, at given input prices. So basically, if you remember, labor, the cost of per unit labor was the wage rate. Cost per unit of capital is the rental rate. So the total cost is... W times number of workers plus rental rate times number of capital employed. Okay, so we can actually put this in a graph, just like the graph uh, we used in the isoquant plane. So capital here, labor here. Okay, so treat capital just like the y axis. So if you can rearrange, I want to leave capital by itself. So I'm going to throw this to the other side and divide everything by R. What you'll get is K equals, right, C over R minus W R L. Okay, so this C is a total sum cost level. You can put a bar on top to signify that it is constant we can call this c0 for certain cost level c1 higher cost level but this is the equation okay so this looks like how do we find that mm, what this uh lo line looks like right iso cost curve looks like is it a this is going to be a straight line okay linear line so let's say if i hire zero workers right l is zero the first term disappears uh, the second term sorry disappears so k is going to be equal to total cost divided by the unit cost of the capital so that's the maximum units of capital you can purchase let's say you have four hundred dollars rental rate is fifty uh, i'm just making up everything fifty dollars so you can purchase eight units of capital how about the other extreme if capital is zero right if this guy is zero then L is going to be, if you rearrange this, this is whole thing is equal to zero. If you rearrange this, what you get is that it's going to be equal to C over um, W. Oops, I put R. That's a mistake. Okay. So how do we do this? We can just do it here real quickly. C over R minus W over R. L equals to zero. Right. C over R equals W R w over r times l these cancel out so c total cost divided by wage rate that's the number of labor you can hire what does it mean let's say i have one thousand dollars i have to pay each worker hundred dollars so i can hire 10 worker hours that's what it means okay so let's clean this slide up a little bit <laughs> We found those uh, intercepts, y-intercept and x-intercept. Oops, I did too much. It's okay. Let's clean it real good. Okay, I'm just going to clean it real quick. <laughs> All right. I didn't mean to erase everything, but it just happened. When it happens, what can we do? We'll do it again. It doesn't matter. K equals... C over R minus W over R, L, okay? So L is zero, K is, you can hire these many capital. If you hire no capital, you can spend all your money on hiring labor. So it looks like this, folks. You have capital here, labor here. It's going to be a line like this. This intercept will be C over W. This will be total cost over rental rate. What's the slope of this line? Oh sorry for my dog what's the slope of this line slope is here negative w over r so it's negative right downward sloping curve iso cost w over r the price of whatever wherever input you have on the x-axis divided by the price of whatever you have on the y-axis okay so we learn how to draw the iso cost curve so again, this is just a PowerPoint slide. Total cost, WL, plus rental rate, number of capital. You can rearrange. Again, this C, C bar here means it's constant. It can be C bar, C0, C1, whatever you call it. It's basically saying there is a given 
um, level of expenditure. Okay, slope of an ISO cost curve is the negative of the input price ratio, negative W over R, negative of the price of whatever input you have on the x axis divided by whatever input, the price of the whatever input you have on the y axis. K intercept, capital uh, Y intercept is cost divided by cost of capital and represents amount of capital that may be purchased if zero labor is uh, hired and vice versa too. Okay, so this is an example of isocost curve. Uh, here, basically the same uh, notation, right? Isocost curves again show various combinations of labor and capital that are equally costly. These are just like budget lines, right? So here you go. We call total cost C0, that's a level of cost, capital, labor. Mark the intercepts. What's the slope? Slope of this is going to be negative W of over R. Okay, check this out. This is another isocost curve. Isocost curve, uh, we can call this uh, IC0, IC1, just random, you know, labeling. This isocost curve corresponds to higher level of cost of production. Don't forget that. Higher isocost lines indicate higher costs. Therefore, C1 is greater than C0. Okay, so this is an applied example. So I'm just going to, whenever I see an example, folks, this is what I do. I just write down the formula. Hey, even if I'm a professor, that doesn't mean I remember everything all the time. So I start with the basics and I can derive everything from this. It's super easy. Total cost needs to be the sum of cost money spent on labor, wage rate times number of workers employed, plus number of capital times rental rate. So as a result, what you have is total cost equals to the input prices times number of inputs hired, right? So pull the K out of this minus W over R else. All right, cool. So you might be given numbers, right? It's really easy. I don't even need this graph. Let me see if I can. No, I can't get rid of it. But imagine that we are not given this. We can derive this ourselves. It's super easy. Okay. I can do this. I know this is going to be C over R. I know this is going to be C cost over um, W. I know the slope of this guy is going to be negative W over R. Let's plug in numbers. C over 400 over wage rate is 25. Okay, so this is first of all is going to be what? 16. 16 maximum labor you can hire if you only hired labor. C over R, 50, $400 divided by 50, that's going to be 8. So if you only hired capital, you can maximum hire 8 units of capital. Negative W over R, negative 25 over 50. So it's negative one over two. That's the budget line um, slope. Okay. So I know I like scratch this. Don't do that. Right. And I'd love to just uh, write down this formula before I continue. I'm sorry. So I can just write down 400 equals what is W25 labor plus 50 capital. So that's my budget line. So let's not be too crazy. I don't want highlighter. I want eraser. So we didn't have to do this. I just did it just to show you like we don't need their graphs. We can actually pretty much draw our own. But it is consistent with what we, what we found. There you go. And slope is this. You connect these points with a straight line. That's a budget line. So look at this. You can choose different, I'm going to erase everything from this slide. You can choose different combinations of um, inputs, right? That produce, that give you the same cost. ISO means same cost. So both point A, B and point C actually also, they all cost you, all cost $400, okay? I'm not saying they all produce the same. No, they all cost $400. Point A, you only hired capital, eight capital, zero uh, labor. 
Point B, you hired six units of capital, four units of labor. Point C, you hired four units of capital, eight units of um, labor. And then look at this extreme. You only hired 16 units of labor. So all these generate the same cost. Okay. What happens if my cost goes up? So I can, let's say, spend more money. So that's the next slide. Let's say... I now can dedicate not $400, but I can now put in $500 in production. That's awesome. I'm going to put a smiley face, okay? So then I can write the new, you know, formula. Nothing changes. It's the same formula. 500 equals 25 labor, 50 capital, okay? So if labor is zero, so one extreme, right? I'm going to calculate capital intercept. Labor is zero, then 500 divided by 50, capital is going to be 10. So maximum now I can actually hire 10 ver uh, capital with zero workers. Let's say my capital is zero, so I want to find this intercept here. If capital is zero, right, 25L is equal to 500. So labor is going to be 20 units, so 20, 10 did the slope change? The slope didn't change because the wages and the rental rate did not change. So equation looks like this. If you can have a higher cost, then you're moving to a higher, um, higher isocost curve. Folks, do not forget that I'm erasing everything. Don't forget that with isoquants, there are you know unlimited, infinite number of isoquants, right? There. Are infinite number of iso costs all right so next part we're going to put them together so that's chapter nine part three and i'll see you at that part bye